So we're the Wash Cholera Research Group, working group five. Um, the group of us came together and worked on a prioritization exercise. Um, we decided there was already lots of prioritization of what research to do, welcomes, chinry, manuscripts, meetings, GTFCC, and there wasn't a need for us to do this, to do more kind of research question prioritization, but we did want to res support research completion and dissemination. And so linking actors together, updating actors, disseminating results, and, and sharing research and operational data. And as part of that, um, to move forward on linking, updating, and disseminating and sharing, we wanted to actually do that today. Um, ongoing research that we know of going on in cholera, uh, CDC is working on some CADI assessments and other assessments, John Hopkins on CADI and a DRC project, LSHGM um, on CADI and, and Uvira projects. There's been some work on ceramics out of Tufts and, and then a DRC project in, in UNICEF. And so what we wanted to do today was actually focus on, on one of the things that's being highly researched right now, which is caddies. And we have Tom here in person, and then we have Gurpreet and, um, and Ruan in very early time zones um, in North America, who will each give about six to seven minute presentations with some time for questions afterward. Okay, thank you. I hope you can hear me okay. I'm gonna have to go a little bit quickly because I have a few uh, slides that I, I want to show and I've got a small amount of time. So this is a performance evaluation um, completed by my colleagues at CDC, Andrea Martinson, Taylor Osborne, and our colleagues at UNICEF in North Kivu. So this was looking at CATIs in four priority health zones in North Kivu um, using multi-sectoral teams from uh, Red Cross and DPS. Um, so just to keep in mind, there's a team that includes a driver uh, and then various staff who will go out to the response. Um, and the WASH package was at the household level, the delivery of a hygiene kit, which included the items mentioned there, jerry can bucket, household water treatment products, and two different products were used plus soap. And then there's a separate uh, distribution that goes to the surrounding households. So a kind of a cordon sanitaire or a ring. Um, and then there was hygiene promotion um, and uh, disinfection in both of those areas. And the hygiene promotion part was done communally. So it may have reached outside of the, of the, uh, the ring structure as well. Next, please. Do I do that? Okay, so, so the objectives of this was to look at performance of the, of the CATI response. And by that, we wanted to look at the timing of the response, how many households were reached, how quickly they were reached, and then look at what, and, and, and then look at what happens after the CATI team leaves. Was there uptake of those products? Was there any, any increase in knowledge, et cetera? And we used two different methods. So we used the secondary analysis from the Red Cross team that documents the, the, the output of the teams. And then we have a separate external evaluation that visited the households targeted by the CATI at two time points after the CATI team left. And so, so this, this just shows, shows some, some of the key results, results of, the, of the, the response. So this is, this from, is from the Red the Cross red monitoring red data. And if you look at the top row in the circle, you see that about 71% of the responses, they arrived at the household within 24 hours. And uh, within 48 hours, about 95%. So pretty good response time. And, and this is uh, time from the, the case appears at the health facility, not the date of onset. So there might be another day between when illness started and when the team actually arrives in, in the community. And then if you look at the vertical circle on the right-hand side, that's basically showing that about 18 to 19 households were reached in each ring structure uh, by the CATI team. So pretty uh, good size uh, uh, ring uh, number of households. So, and then this is, sort of describes the methods used to do the external evaluation. Um, and, and so here is the kind of a graphic of you have a suspect case that's visited. You have a certain number of households that are targeted for the ring strategy for distributions. Um, and then you have households around the outside. So our uh, strategy was to visit the, the suspect case, choose five randomly within the cordon, within about that 18 to 19 households, and then to choose three on the outside just to, for a comparison. And the idea was to visit two additional times, so once at the baseline, and then about two weeks after the initial uh, 
deployment, and then again, another two weeks after that, so about after one month. Uh, so those are the time points when information was collected. And this just shows um, what happened, what we found. And in, in summary, you'll see that there was soap at the beginning, but the soap disappeared very quickly after the first visit. So within, after the two weeks, there was very little soap available. With Aquatabs, uh, there was also uh, liquid chlorine as well, but you saw a drop in the number available, which suggests usage in the households, uh, but then a smaller drop between the first visit and the second visit, suggesting lower level usage during the second two weeks or the, the final two weeks of the four week time period. So this then uh, shows uh, the self-reported household water treatment. So they provided household wa water treatment products. You can see it's very low at the beginning, 10 to 15%. And this is the case household and the, uh, the ring household in the blue and the green. And they both shot up to 75, 80% and then slight decrease during the second visit. And the light gray at the bottom shows that there was no change households outside the ring structure, which makes sense. Uh, but when we look at actually testing for chlorine residual in the stored drinking water, we still see low levels at the beginning, an increase, and then some stabilization or slight decrease, but the numbers are much lower, about half as much. Or, so we, this would either be that people over-reported that they treated their water, or the water was stored for a longer period of time, or they didn't dose uh, uh, approximately in, in the chlorine re resulted. But overall, there was less chlorine in treated water at the household level than was reported. And this sort of summarizes the knowledge of key times to wash hands. And these are kind of bands of uh, all three groups, those at the, the targeted household, those inside the ring, those outside the ring. And you can see some started off at fairly high level, certain uh, key times to hand wash, um, but most of them or all of them increased up after the two week visit and then stayed stable over the four week visit. So overall pr pretty good uptake on the messaging and at least maintenance through the four weeks, but some started out at a, at a much lower level. So in, in summary, about 93% of all cases received a CATI visit, 71 were visited within 24 hours and about 95% were visited within 48 hours. Self-reported household water treatment increased, but started to de decrease uh, during the second visit. Um, most households had no soap after the first visit um, and decrease in the Aquatabs after the, after the first visit. And knowledge of wash practices uh, increased and stayed stable over the four week period. So what are the next steps? Um, so we, there was two things that we wanted to look at that we haven't completed yet, and these are important ones. We want to know what proportion of the cases that we responded to were actually cholera. So people come in, they may, it could be rotavirus, diarrhea, E. coli, or something else. There was testing done, but it's done by culture, and that takes several days. In the meantime, the cases are, the, the CATI team has already responded. So it'd be good to know what proportion are actually, uh, you, those resources are actually going to cholera cases. And then the second piece we want to document is what is the cost of the implementation? Because it's, it's not just the package that goes to those 18, 19 households, it's a driver, a vehicle, person time as well. So that this is important to keep in mind uh, in terms of the strategy. So the next steps we want to do a repeat performance evaluation, probably again in a, in a different location with the DRC, um, but it could be elsewhere. And we want to probably this time use laboratory confirmation using RDTs. So we actually know if they're cases or not. Um, and then the, the last piece of this is we want to do the health impact evaluation. So if the CATIs are implemented well, they target, they go quickly, they do a nice package, what's the impact of that? And, and so that's, that's the big piece that we want to tackle next. And just thanks to my colleagues who did all the work on this. And thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, can you see my slides? Yes, you're great. Great. Okay, thank you. Um, good afternoon. Today I'll present briefly on uh, a CADI project and our research to evaluate its effectiveness. Um, just to note from the start, our project um, is driven by Epicentre, uh, the epidemiology arm of MSF. Um, and it, it also involves London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. Um, and um, the implementation will be done by MSF and, and the Ministry of Health. 
um, and we will be doing the evaluation in terms of Episan through analysis HTM. As, par, as per our status for the study, it's not quite like uh, Tom's study. We are hoping to launch this soon in DRC. So as you know, uh, CATI is based on the finding that persons within a 100 to 500 meter radius of the primary case of an outbreak are much more likely uh, to be at risk than those who are farther away. So there is an opportunity to greatly reduce or contain transmission in the spring to prevent a larger outbreak. So for MSF, CATI includes um, you know, rapidly launching the intervention within one to three days of the initial cases in an outbreak uh, as they're identified applying CATI around 100 to 500 meter radius around the households, uh, it, which constitute the primary case households in an outbreak. And it also includes several interventions, um, including um, antibiotic chemoprophylaxis, um, oral cholera vaccination, perhaps one dose at the start, um, and household directed wash uh, interventions as well including water treatment, safe storage, um, and hygiene promotion. So as you can see here, this is uh, kind of an idea, a, th a theory of how we would um, the interventions within the circle, which is the ring, and then the cases, uh, sorry, the households outside the ring would not receive uh, the interventions. So a little bit more on the motivation of this project. Um, so we did do a review, uh, uh, I think last year, which generally showed what works um, in CATI and that CATI does work. It appears to work well. Um, and several modalities of CATI have been used um, and rapid response as well has been used in different contexts. Um, but we see mostly um, if we look at UNICEF and Ministry of Health implementation of CATI, it's, it's including WASH um, and MSF has had a few pilots um, with uh, oral cholera vaccination attached to a WASH package as well. So uh, our main finding is that there's adding vaccination to CADI might um, provide better and more long-term protection to this already strong package um, to the people most at risk. So we wanted to explore that more. Um, there's, that has, is considered a knowledge gap because most CADI evaluations did not include oral cholera vaccination. Um, they are also based on suspected cholera uh, rather than um, uh, confirmed or, or, or RDT positive cholera. And most of the studies have used routine data, so they're they're retrospective um, in scope. So currently, CADI with vaccination isn't part of um, WHO or or any national plans for cholera preparedness and um, response. So the goals, our goals, were to um, create evidence to allow MSF to implement CATI with OC, with OCV in different um, settings and the other parts of the package, and just generally to add, generate ev evidence to influence policy uh, more broadly than than MSF alone. So um, we've developed a generic study protocol, uh, which has been uh, approved uh, by various IRBs. And the idea is to evaluate the effectiveness of CATI in the rapid containment of uh, case clusters at the start of an outbreak. And we would do this by uh, measuring incidence in each of the rings of RDT positive, enriched RDT positive cholera within targeted rings. So we have various secondary objectives, which are to measure the population-based coverage of the interventions um, after the fact to look at the general spatiotemporal transmission of the outbreak and just understand whether things have changed before and after CATI is applied. Um, uh, look at the impact on household transmission. Um, and also if an antibiotic is used for chemoprophylaxis, uh, look at antimicrobial resistance in, in various ways. And uh, it is important to look at the resources and costs um, as well. So the study design is a prospective observational study of, um, which is sort of piled on top of MSF's intervention. Um, so Epicentre and LSHTM would be studying how this was implemented. We've um, estimated that it will take around 100 rings um, to achieve the power needed. Um, and the primary outcome, again, is cholera incidence um, of our, our enriched RDT positive cholera in each uh, CATI ring. And essentially we would measure the incidence among the rings um, sort of categorized by the del delay to launching CATI in rings. And this delay serves as a proxy for performance of CATI. Um, so it has been approved by uh, the MSF um, 
uh, Review Board, as well as uh, London School of Hygiene Tropical Medicine Review Board, and uh, a few country um, IRBs as well. So in terms of where uh, we're doing this, we've, uh, we're have we broadly trying to apply this in a few different settings. Uh, right now, um, the project has been approved and is, is ready to go in um, Democratic Republic of Congo. Um, as you can see here, uh, where the vaccines are in country and the timeline is within the coming months. Just wrapping up here, we have several MSF sections who are ready to implement looking at DRC in around 30 different health zones uh, where they could implement CADI, where there's interest and where there's preparedness to do so. Um, right now, cholera is appearing um, as um, endemic in endemic areas in the east, South Kivu, North Kivu, around Goma and Tanganyika as well. Um, and we'd be ready to do implementation as well as the study on top of this. So um, in terms of the challenges right now, the uh, surveillance is key to CADI, but um, it, we, we have to make sure that surveillance is sort of integrated at the health zone level to be able to detect cases quickly and respond to them. So that's some work that, that is ongoing. Prepositioning of materials uh, between, especially if they're supposed to reach different sites if needed, is, is definitely a challenge. And as we know, there's many uh, different partners involved and uh, communicating with them around implementation and the study is, is quite important. So um, the study will be starting soon. I'll leave that uh, there for now uh, with the correct study apparatus on the right-hand column set up in country. So just to say thank you to the wide array of people who are uh, working on this uh, in the different ministries and uh, within um, LSHTM, MSF, and Epicenter. Thank you. Hello, can you hear me now? We can. Oh, excellent. Okay. Fantastic. Welcome. Sorry about that. Thanks, Mateo. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and begin. My name is Gurpreet Kaur. I am a research associate with the Johns Hopkins uh, CADI study, CADI project, uh, looking at cholera response in humanitarian settings. Um, the research team has previously presented on you to you um, on prior components of the study, which have included uh, Gray and Pierlet reviews, as well as a retrospective case study. Um, as mentioned, I think, in the, the previous two presentations and also um, findings from, uh, from these components was that caddies are thought to be potentially more resource efficient and um, potentially more effective, at least if used at the beginning of the cholera outbreak. However, the caddies and their interventions are not standardized, though there is usually a wash component. Um, and the coverage area of a caddy is also, um, there's, there is variability there. So the perspective component, um, is the last piece in the um, in the CADI project that we have ongoing. Um, we were fortunate enough to partner with um, Action Contra La Femme and Solidarity International uh, in Nigeria as they implemented a CADI approach to the recent cholera outbreak. Um, Hopkins um, was remote and then ACF and Solidarity implemented um, the study and the data collection in the base states. Um, with Mozambique, that conversation is ongoing to partner with INS in case there is a cholera outbreak this season in Cabo Delgado or Nampula. The funder for the project is BHA. So the perspective, um, it's a perspective observational study and it is designed to be flexible with what is actually going on um, in the CADI response. The primary aim um, of the study is looking at the CADI activation time to um, and its relationship with uh, cholera incidents in that area of uh, CADI intervention. As far as secondary aims goes, um, uh, a key area of uh, interest is looking at then the relationship between the CADI completeness, um, specifically more so the coverage area of the CADI and its relationship to, um, to cholera incidents. The, <clears throat> the protocol in the study um, was designed in collaboration with Ruan. I'm, I'm sorry, I missed your presentation. Um, so there are some shared, um, shared methodologies. 
The main component of the study um, is collecting data at the household level, both at case and neighbors that receive the caddy, including GPS coordinates. Um, a, a second part of the study, um, which is smaller, is doing a select number of key informant interviews, both with the caddy implementers and then also with, um, with the NGO uh, coordination. So specifically looking at um, Nigeria and the data collected with ACF and uh, SI, um, the data collection was begun once uh, the state-specific IRB approvals were obtained. Um, collection began sometime in September. Um, as far as early October um, in each of the states. And then all of the data collection around the CATIs ended at the very end of December. Some of the key informant interviews are still ongoing. Just looking at the CADI strategy that was implemented, both organizations um, used a 150 meter radius around the case household to implement the CADI intervention. It was primarily a WASH uh, component that was WASH and then hygiene promotion. Um, at the case household, cholera kits were distributed at the neighbor houses, a combination of soap and aqua tabs. Hygiene promotion and household spraying was uh, delivered both at the case and neighbor houses. There were slight variations in the cholera kit composition and also in um, the spraying solutions that were used. Talking a little bit more around the, um, the methodology of how the phase one data was, uh, was collected. Um, when the CADI team went out to respond to a cholera case, the enumerators went with the CADI team and collected observational data at the case and at the neighbor houses, um, along with household GPS coordinates. Um, this was done using a mobile app. Um, and the output, just as an example of the GPS coordinates, is shown at the bottom of the PowerPoint. Um, approximately seven to 14 days later, just the enumerators went out to that same area of intervention and this time conducted household level um, questionnaires at the case and neighbor houses. Um, and those questionnaires looked more at um, wash practices, the wash infrastructure, um, some hygiene knowledge, and also recall of, um, of self-reported diarrhea. And again, GPS um, coordinates were taken. So as far as the geospatial component, which is a significant part of the study, um, this is just to give you a visual of how we're looking at the overlay of the um, geospatial and the caddy rings, both at the implementation, so the phase one, and then um, the overlap at phase two. The data analysis and the data cleaning is ongoing right now. Um, just as far as numbers goes, for instance, in Borno, which had the largest outbreak of the three um, states, uh, around 1,188 um, caddies were implemented around cases, um, which covered uh, approximately 25,000 neighbors. Um, some findings or feedback that is already coming out in the key informant interviews, um, though the qualitative analysis still needs to be under, um, undertaken, um, is on that 150 meter radius uh, measurement. Um, but there was variability in how the teams adapted to estimate that 150 meters, whether it was using a proxy as footsteps or using a proxy as household counts. Um, because the 150 meter radius was implemented in both rural, but also very dense environments like Mataguri, um, actually seeing a team being able to cover a full 150 meter radius was, um, it was challenging for the team. So we saw that, you know, the full 150 meter radius is usually not covered as far as covering neighbors. Um, reasons for, uh, you know, not having, uh, for neighbors declining the caddy intervention or the neighbors not being included within a caddy was, first of all, that they didn't accept or that nobody was at home. Um, other reasons was when the caddy team went that there was no male head of household um, or that there was only a minor at home. Um, next steps, as I mentioned already, uh, was that we are working on uh, finalizing the data cleaning and also in the process of conducting the data analysis. Thank you.